Where are we going to this weekend, buddy? <laughs> I wasn't prepared to be on camera. <laughs> We're going to Charlottesville. What's our first stop? First winery of the day, Jefferson Vineyards. Have awesome Chardonnay. We'll see what else is good. Now that one where you finish tasting and disappear, just went away. Yep. Aged in steel, and that's what it does. This is the same grapes, but it's aged in French and Hungarian oak and some American oak. The French and Hungarian are at least twice used beforehand, so therefore it doesn't have a huge amount of flavor, but it has, still has some, and the American oak has some flavor. So this will stay with you. It'll be longer, it'll have more flavor, more aroma. People prefer one or the other, or both? <laughs> he likes the stainless. Okay. I like the oak. Well, if it gets over oak, I, I get away from it. And yeah. some, taste, some people do. That's just their, their preference. Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't taste like sawdust. Mm -hmm. You want it to be sawdust. The Chardonnays are really good. It's like the only Virginia Chardonnays I actually really like and I feel like are worth the money. 40% Merlot, 25% Cabernet Franc. Got rid of the skins and then do all the fermentation the cold way. So it's a French style rose. It's quite dry, aromatic. The painting of roses on it from the uh, Stanley did. The, the original painting is in there. Definitely, it's more yellow than most rosés. Well, some people use some red and some white mm -hmm. when they make rosés. It's, it's, it's no holds barred any way you want to. Um, so this is an everyday red table wine, simple wine. I wouldn't have this with steaks, but I would with pizza, pasta, uh, barbecue, sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just if you just want a simple glass of red wine, this actually goes very nicely if you chill it. You serve it cold. Do you just like it? This like is that sacrilegious to you? Now we're low. I just would hate this. One of the wonderful grapes from the Bordeaux region. This is a finely tuned machine. You know? I love heavy wines, but some are lows are too heavy. I prefer the next one. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it's something about the flavor. I don't know if it's a lot of Merlots, especially the California ones, I think have kind of like the green pepper flavor. It's a wonderful, heavy Bordeaux grape. It's used a lot in France to add flavor. We like it so much, we bottle it. We think it's well worthwhile, good grape. You can almost chew it. I think it's so. I've had it a couple of times. But it's a society that was formed back in 1981 in California to give it a chance for the American winemakers to compete with Bordeaux in France. If you buy a bottle of Bordeaux, they don't, nowhere on the label will tell you what's in it. Right. It could be any one of the five principal grapes. So we said, okay, we'll do the same thing. We'll make it the same. Each year we'll change the, the blend based on what the fruit is. But we will always put on the bottle what it is. So this is four of the five. as the Petit Pidot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, and the Merlot. It does not have Malbec, which is the fifth grape. But it's always our best grapes. We've aged them individually for 20 months in barrels each in their own, and we gradually pick and choose how we want to blend it and turn out and make uh, actual meritage. Do, uh, I mean, we love Malbec, but... I do, too. Um, do a lot of people grow that grape here? I've never really... Grown We've grown it here. I, I, to be honest, I don't know if we grew it this year. We've got herb, goat cheese, yogurt, cheese bread, and a big knife. <laughs> Red. We have curried chicken salad. I think you think of the little girl you saw walking on the trail by the house that was pulling the dog and she went after for tea kettle because the dog weighed more than uh, she did. The dog ripped her right <laughs> off her feet. Oak. Never heard of this grape before. 
a lot of winemakers use it as a blending grape. Mm -hmm. Michael's been doing it as its own varietal for quite some time. Now. It's one of my favorites. The grapes are smaller, and so it takes more of them, but uh, they seem to be doing well in Virginia. So good success. Over to France for the Mercure Bill. Mercure is the name of the village, and here is a map of Burgundy. Um, Mercure is midway down in the Burgundy region. And this also has had about eight months in oak, part neutral and part new French oak. A little more minerality uh, from the soil over there. Mount de Bourgogne. This is made from the Pinot Noir grape. It's had very little skin contact, so uh, hence the pale color and delicate flavors. Uh, made in the traditional Lethe uh, Champagnoise. <laughs> this is a Pinot Noir from uh, France. It's listed here. And Jeffrey uh, Chamberton is in the northern part of the Burgundy region. Right here. Still quite young. It's a 2014, so it needs a couple of years in the bottle. But I'll give you just an idea of what it can be like. With some Cabernet Franc. Uh, these grapes were grown up at Carter's Mountain, which has great elevation, good airflow, good drainage. Cabernet Franc does very well there. It too is a 2014, but very drinkable right now. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're going to the Sedona Tap House. We stopped here once, how many years ago? A million years ago. Yeah, it was really, really good. Great beer, good, like high end bar food, so had to check it out again. Fine ripe and tomato salad. Might be only than that. This is our 2015 Cabernet Sauvignon. This is brand new on the tasting menu. Um, you'll get hints of green peppercorn, currant, and vanilla. It's more of a medium body red wine. It's got like a little bit of a bite to it. So for our next winery, this one isn't labeled from the road, and we drove past it a couple of times this morning trying to figure out if this was actually it. No signage, no nothing. And then the people up at Blenheim 
told us that this is one of the better ones to be. This guy is like the father of Virginia wines, so we're going to go check it out. It is called Gabriella Ross Winery. I was going to say, don't pronounce it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Ross. And the coolest little and building coolest you've little ever building seen. That his son's actually built for him. We want, we want to build a house like that out in the middle of the mountains. And that would be the right size and everything. Yeah, 600 Perfect. square feet. Harvest red grapes, but then we whole cluster press them. So we put them in the press and we, we get the juice out. So the pulp is not red. The pulp is white even in a red grape. It's really the contact with the skin is what, what gives it its color. So you can, you can make a white. <laughs> I really like that Pinot Grigio and I don't like Pinot Grigio. I, I was telling them really when, when people offer me Pinot Grigio at a party, I usually get beer because I don't yeah. see Pinot Grigio either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, but it was a lot of fun because they had, they had a We're ready for the blush. Yes. Jefferson made it with two reds. We make it with one red, one white. So this has the Chamberson, but then it also has uh, Vignette uh, Chardonnay. Steel aged Chamberson, oak aged Chardonnay. Yeah. Uh, Percival, Northern Virginia. They just still it up to 150 proof. Send us the brandy back, and then we add 150 proof brandy to what we had started to ferment before with the very rich 8% mixture. Bring it up to 18%. Age it in once used bourbon barrels from Jack Daniels. Wow. So, and it's aged for what, three years, George? The Highland three years? Yes. In bourbon barrels? Yeah. Three years. And I have cheese and sausage crackers. I have fresh baked bread if you want a baguette of bread. But yeah. you're good. You're okay. If you're good the way you are, yeah. Yeah. put one hand under the bag, but don't just carry the strings. And thanks for coming down. Thank you. Thank you That's so great. Much. Nice to see you both. You too. Take care. You too.